Hey guys, would you consider pairing a $100 chip with a top tier graphics card a good idea? And can we squeeze great gaming out of it? We were curious enough, so we set out on a journey to test and compare Ryzen 3, 5, 7 and 9 while using RTX 3080 and 3090. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing as we have lots of exciting content coming your way. Before we get into the benchmarks, let's quickly talk about our bench. CPU-wise, we have Ryzen 3 3300X, Ryzen 5 3600 XT, Ryzen 7 3800 XT, and Ryzen 9 3900 XT. These are running on ASUS ROG Strix B550E gaming motherboard. We're running all of these at stock settings with performance enhancement turned off to keep things a little bit more fair. Jumping into the benchmarks themselves, and starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, while at 1080p, we see Ryzen 3 is between 5 and 15% slower on average and about 20% slower on the 1 percentiles. When it comes down to Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, the difference is about 5% on average FPS and almost no difference on the 1 percentiles. Ryzen 9, on the other hand, sees about 5% improvement on average score and almost no difference on the 1 percentiles. If you look closely, at this resolution, the graphics card doesn't really affect anything. Moving on to 1440p and we see Ryzen 3 lagging behind but with GPU upgrade the performance is consistently increasing. This is because CPU is able to push more work to the graphics card and therefore being less of a bottleneck. Moving up the chart we see a very small spread between Ryzen 5 through Ryzen 9. At most the average difference is about 10% and a 4% on the 1 percentiles. In the 4K league things are starting to get interesting. We can analyze this based on the graphics card tier and immediately see that at RTX 3080 level, the average frame rate performance is very similar, with Ryzen 7 taking the lead by about 1%. When it comes to 1 percentiles, we see 11% spread with Ryzen 3 being the slowest and the Ryzen 7 being the fastest. This is mostly due to the boost speeds that the Ryzen 7 chip delivers. At RTX 3090 level, we see identical average FPS and now only 8% difference between Ryzen 3 and the rest. To be fair, in this game, any of these chips will deliver great 4K gaming experience. The next game we have is Horizon Zero Dawn, looking at 1080p. As expected, we have Ryzen 3 down at the bottom with average scores of up to 82 FPS and 1 percentiles of under 60, even with RTX 3090 graphics card. When we examine the performance of the new cards, we see around 10% jump in average frame rates and 7% on the 1 percentiles between Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. Upgrading to Ryzen 9 while using RTX 3080 grants us about 5% average FPS and 7% 1 percentile improvement. Additionally, RTX 3090 is actually performing about the same because of the CPU bottleneck. When moving on to the 1440p gaming, we see a similar story. Ryzen 3 is about 11% behind Ryzen 5, Ryzen 5 is about 7% behind Ryzen 7, while on top of the chart, the difference between Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 is only about 8% on average FPS, but it raises to 11% on the 1 percentiles. When we jump to 4K, the frame rates are more influenced by the graphics card, and we see Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 trading blows on the average FPS, but Ryzen 5 is about 11% higher on the 1 percentiles, and they stay above 60 FPS, making it very much playable with maxed out settings, providing you have RTX 3090 that is. Upgrading to Ryzen 7 grants us about a 5% improvement and Ryzen 9 a further 6% improvement. The next game is Total War 3 Kingdoms. Starting with 1080p, we have Ryzen 3 struggling at the bottom, with the rest being on average a few percent difference between each other. When looking at 1 percentiles, Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 have about 11 to 17% lead over Ryzen 5. Just like other games, we have a bottleneck at 1080p. This is why Ryzen 9 is not right at the top of the chart. Moving on to 1440p, we see Ryzen 3 doing great work on average FPS but falls short when it comes down to 1 percentiles, about 26% short of Ryzen 5 and 45% from Ryzen 7. The rest of the chips have about 1% difference between them on average and up to 5% difference while at 1 percentiles. When we move to the 4K, all the CPUs even out completely and it is now 100% based on GPU performance. The CPU here does not really matter. Unfortunately, with all of these combinations, that 1 percentile performance is just too low to play. This game is still a good test though. Lastly, we have Metro Exodus. At 1080p resolution, we see a very nice scaling based on the graphics card, but overall the results are too close to call any of them a clear winner. Moving on to the 1440p, we see exactly the same trend. What about 4K? 
Well, it is exactly the same. To be fair, with this setup you can play 1080p on maxed out settings. Anything higher would be stuttering. We've also tested this game with ray tracing enabled as well as ray tracing together with DLSS. And the results are very similar. The difference is about 1% on most of the examples, which is expected run-to-run -run variance. Ultimately, if you want to play this game without ray tracing or DLSS, then 1080p is about as high as you can go. If you want ray tracing, then you can do it only when enabling 1440p and DLSS, and then any of these CPUs will do just fine. Moving on to the productivity tasks. And in this Blender BMW test, we see Ryzen 3 is just about one second behind. And this is because the maximum boot speed is lower against the other CPUs. When we run the classroom test, we see the same thing, but here Ryzen 9 is also a second behind. In this benchmark, additional cores don't really make a difference. The most important parameter here is high clock speed. Next, we used Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve Studio benchmark to see how well these CPUs perform. And here, as long as you have at least eight cores and good boost speed, it will do really well. In video creative workflow, CPU and GPU are working simultaneously and it's best to have a very balanced system. As you can see, Ryzen 9 is ahead as it should be, but Ryzen 7 is just behind and is actually able to keep up while using RTX 3090. When we drop down to the RTX 3080, the difference between Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 5 is about 11%, even though there is double the cores. To sum it all up, if you want to get yourself a cheap Ryzen 3 CPU and pair it with RTX 3080 and call it a day, then under very specific conditions and only in certain games, you may be able to get away with 4K gaming without losing too much performance. But realistically, a lot of games are now optimizing for more cores. It may on the other hand serve as a short-term bandage while you save up for the better chip. If you want the best gaming performance, then Ryzen 7 is the great choice due to its higher boost speed. Also, having 8 cores makes it much easier to cool down in comparison to Ryzen 9. If the focus is value, then Ryzen 5 is the perfect chip. It does lose out, but overall it still performs really well across the board. And lastly, if you have some more budget, you do gaming, maybe even do some streaming, and on top of that carry out some productivity tasks, such as video editing, then it would be justified to look at getting Ryzen 9 to have plenty of performance for proper multitasking. Something to consider. In the next few weeks, AMD will be releasing the new CPUs, and with those we'll have more performance and also price drops on existing items. So it is a great time to look for an upgrade regardless of your budget. I hope this helps and good luck on your hunting. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.